Welcome now to question 10A, CSEC Math Exam January 2012 video solution. And in this question, we are given the diagram of a regular hexagon. We are told it's a regular hexagon. And OA on this hexagon is 5 centimeters. O is the center of this hexagon. Now, because it's a regular hexagon, it means that all six sides of this hexagon are equal in length and all internal angles are also equal. And what it also means is that lines from the center to the vertices will form six equal or six congruent triangles. And I have inserted this angle theta which we will be required to calculate. So if this angle is theta, then this angle also is theta, this angle is theta, this one is theta, this angle is theta, and this angle is theta. So there are six of these angles around the center. And each of these lines, O to the vertices, O to A is five centimeters. O to B will also be five. Here will be five. This piece will be five. This one is five. And that one also is 5 centimeters. So we really have 6 congruent triangles. So let's put that information in one at a time. Information that we need to solve this question. Now because it's an hexagon, it means that it has 6 sides and 6 internal angles, as I have said. And because it is a regular hexagon, regular means that all the sides are equal and all the internal angles are equal. And the angles will be equal as I've just explained. Now, the first question is asking us to determine angle AOB. Angle AOB, that's this angle that I have marked theta. Now, around the center, we can make a circle that will have a total of 360 degrees. And there will be six of these theta angles inside that 360 degrees. So let me go ahead and show that. There it is. We can form a circle around the center. And the total angle in that circle is 360 degrees. But then there are six equal angles inside here. And each one will be equal to theta. And so if we divide the 360 by 6, we would have calculated the angle AOB which you have marked as theta. So let's show that calculation. And there it is. The angle theta is 360 degrees divided by 6 because there are 6 equal angles in that circle and each of those angles therefore would be 60 degrees and that's the answer for part 1. Now part 2 is asking for the area of the hexagon and Based on this diagram, there are six equal triangles in here, six congruent triangles. And so if we find the area of this triangle and multiply it by six, we would have calculated the area of the hexagon. Remember that because this side is five centimeters, it means also that this side is five centimeters. So in this triangle here, what we would have is two known sides and a known included angle, a known angle between those two sides. And let's go ahead and show what we would use to calculate the area of this triangle, then multiply that area by six to get the area of the hexagon. And this is it. The area of the hexagon would be six multiplied by the area of triangle AOB. And as I have said, the length OB would also be five centimeters and we end up having a triangle with two known sides and an included angle. And we can therefore use the trick formula for the area of a triangle when there's two sides and an included angle. And it is shown here. When we have a triangle with two known sides and a known included angle, a known angle between the two known sides, the area of the triangle is given by this formula. Half the product of the two sides multiplied by the sine of the angle between the two sides and that's what we're going to be using to calculate the area of this triangle and we can show that calculation 
So the area of the hexagon is going to be 6 multiplied by the area of triangle AOB, which is half 5 multiplied by 5, that's the two sides, 5 multiplied by 5 times the sine of the angle between those two known sides, which is 60 degrees. And when we do that calculation, the result is approximately 65 centimeters squared because the question did say we were to calculate to the nearest whole number the area of the hexagon and that's it 65 centimeters squared that's the answer for part a of question 10 let's now move down to part b now part b gives us this diagram and speaks of a vertical pole pl on horizontal plane k l m okay it tells us that the angle of elevation of p from k is 28 degrees it tells us that k l which is here is 15 meters l m which is here is 19 meters and angle k l m is 115 degrees now what we must recognize here is that we have a three-dimensional situation we have two triangles that are in the vertical plane this one and this one so these two triangles this one and this one they are in the vertical plane and this triangle is on horizontal plane right so we have a three-dimensional situation this line is vertical but this line kl is horizontal Again, this line is vertical and this is horizontal. And the angle between vertical and horizontal is 90 degrees. It does not look like 90 degrees on the diagram. But this is because this is a three-dimensional diagram. And we must be able to appreciate that the angle between vertical and horizontal is 90 degrees. Therefore, this is a right-angled triangle. And this also is a right-angled triangle. So the angle here is 90 degrees and the angle here is also 90 degrees now for the angle of elevation p from k angle of elevation is the angle formed by the line of sight when looking upwards okay so it is the angle above the horizontal plane looking upwards so from k to p if we were on the horizontal this is horizontal from k to p right to the base of the line pl so this is horizontal so the angle above this horizontal up to the line of sight from k to p would be the angle of elevation so it means that this angle here is going to be the 28 degrees and later on in the question we'll be asked for the angle of elevation of p from m and similarly that's going to be this angle here the angle above this horizontal from m to p so it would be this angle here angle looking upwards from the horizontal and that angle we're going to mark it as theta so we can calculate that angle later on in the question so let's mark the angle of elevation of p from m as theta degrees now let's go to the questions the first question is asking us to copy the diagram and show all the angles and the distances in the question right so let's go and do that so let's focus on this section where we will complete the diagram and put the information in. Now, as I said, the angle between vertical and horizontal is 90 degrees. So we can go ahead and put our 90 degree angle here and a 90 degree angle here. All right. So that's the first thing we want to do. Then we are told that the angle of elevation of P from K is 28 degrees. And I've explained that. That 28 degrees is the angle between this line and this line because this is horizontal, right? From K to the plane containing PL. And so the angle here is 28 degrees. And this triangle is in the vertical plane. That's a vertical triangle. So that's our 28 degrees. And then we can mark the distance of 15 meters. That's KL is 15 meters, so we can put that on the diagram. KL, 15 meters, that's this length here. And then LM, which is this one, is 19 meters. 19 meters. So let's show that on the diagram as well. 
and then we are giving the angle 115 degrees that's already on the diagram and we're gonna place our angle theta the angle of elevation of p from m angle of elevation of p from m we said we're gonna mark that angle as theta that angle is theta now that's the diagram and that would be our answer now what i want to do is show you the isolation of the three triangles that we'll be working in now i'm going to color code the triangles so we can see that there are three different triangles that we have to work in there are two right angled triangles in the vertical plane this one and this one so let's go ahead and color code those so this first one will give it the color yellow this one will make it slightly gray that's a vertical triangle and that's a vertical triangle and then this horizontal triangle this triangle on the horizontal plane which is not a right angle triangle we will give it a blue color so there is it and then what we can do is isolate this right angle triangle and show it as a right angle triangle and then we can isolate this right angle triangle and show that one also as a right angle triangle all right so let's take those two triangles out and that's our right angle triangle from here right that's triangle plk with the dimensions taken out into this right angle triangle and then we can isolate this triangle again on this side so if we take that triangle out and that's it so this this is the right angle triangle mlp from here and then we leave this blue horizontal triangle on the diagram all right so part two is asking us to calculate given our answers to two significant figures the measure of pl km and the angle of elevation of p from m now if we want to calculate pl which is this it is better to work on this triangle because this triangle we have more information than on this triangle in this triangle we have an angle and we have a side and it's a right angle triangle and therefore we can use one of the trig ratios to calculate this side so let's focus now on this right angle triangle plk for part two right so part two the first part of part two is asking us to calculate pl and in this triangle we want to find the side that is opposite to this angle in this right angle triangle and we know this side that is adjacent to this angle and the trig ratio that connects the opposite and the adjacent in a right angle triangle is the tan tangent trig ratio so we can use the fact that the tan of 28 degrees will be equal to this side pl divided by this known side which is 15 and hence deduce the length of PL. So let's show that calculation. And there it is. So the tan of this angle, which is 28 degrees, will be equal to the opposite to the angle divided by the adjacent to the angle. So that's opposite, which is PL, divided by adjacent. So we can put PL in as unknown side, divided by 15. And then if we multiply both sides by 15, we'll eliminate this 15 here and PL will become the subject. Or we can say we multiply the 15 across here and leave PL as a subject. So let's show that calculation of PL. So PL will be 15 multiplied by the tan of 28 degrees. And when we do that calculation, it comes out that PL is 8.0 meters. The two significant figures, that's 8.0 meters. So PL is 8.0 meters. Now, the second part is asking us for mk, this length here, right? So to calculate this length, we have to come now and work on this horizontal triangle. Now, in this horizontal triangle, what we have is a triangle that is not a right angle triangle. Therefore, we cannot use the trig ratios and we cannot use Pythagoras' theorem. What we have to use is a sine rule or the cosine rule to calculate distances and angles in this non-right angled triangle and in this triangle what we have is typical case for the use of the cosine rule because we have 
two known sides and a known included angle, a known angle between them. We have two known sides, 19 and 15, and a known angle between them. And therefore, we can use the cosine rule to calculate the length, mk. So let's show that calculation. So for mk, using the cosine rule, mk squared will be equal to 19 squared plus 15 squared minus 2 times 19 times 15 multiplied by the cosine of the angle between the sides, which is 115 degrees. This is the application of the cosine rule. All right. And then what we can do is calculate this figure and show that mk squared is equal to 826.9 and then we can take the square root of both sides to find mk and that works out to be mk equals the square root of 826.9 which is equal to 29 meters that's the two significant figures 29 meters all right and then now let's look at the third part of this question the third part is asking us to calculate angle theta, which is the angle of elevation of P from M. So that's this angle here, theta in this diagram. Now remember that we calculated from the first part the length PL, and we calculated that length as 8.0 meters. So we can show that length on the side PL. Right? So we can bring that in and put it there. And so we know in this triangle now, we are trying to find this angle theta. And to this angle theta, we know the opposite side to theta and we know the adjacent. So it's opposite and adjacent in a right angle triangle. And so we must use a tan ratio. Tan of theta equals the opposite over the adjacent. And we can use that trig ratio to calculate the angle theta. And let's show that calculation so tan theta was opposite side over the adjacent side to theta and that's 8.0 meters divided by 19 meters so tan theta equals 8.0 divided by 19 and we can go ahead and show the calculation of theta so theta would be tan to the minus 1 of 0 0.421 which is what 8 divided by 19 would work out to be. So theta is tan to the minus 1 of 0 0.421. And if we do this calculation with our calculator, we see that theta is 23 degrees correct to two significant figures. So the angle of elevation of P from M is 23 degrees. And that's the solution for this question. And we will look to do question 11 in our next video. Okay, bye.